Uh, good morning once again. This is Walter Strittick. I apologize for the um, blip in the universe, which uh, kicked me off of my own webinar. Well, hopefully that won't happen again. Um, I believe a lot of you have um, resolved any issues on your end and are part of the webinar now. Uh, just give me one moment, please, if you don't mind. And I want to make sure that you can see my screen. There we go. That should be the presentation uh, screen. If you could just throw a quick yes in the question box that you can see my presentation, uh, that would be helpful. If you could confirm that, um, that would be appreciated. Again, I apologize for the uh, technical issue. Not exactly sure what's going on, but we can recover from that. So you can see my screen, you can hear me, and we're going to continue right where we left off. Thank you very much again for your patience. Super. So we were talking about gearing with the virtual axes. And um, if you see these function blocks uh, on your screen from my PowerPoint, uh, there are a few function blocks that are required, and of course they have to be all tagged properly. Uh, and in my example this morning, I am using the virtual axes as my master, and then I have axes one as my slave one, and then uh, I have axes two as my slave two. So let's, um, there we go. So here you show the gear in and gear out function blocks. On this screen, you see a snapshot of the gear in position function blocks. Uh, again, showing uh, virtual axes one as my master, and in this one, axes, uh, physical axes one is my slave, and then here, virtual axes one being my master, axes two being my slave. So let me show you what that looks like in real life. And uh, I believe you can see my Unilogic. And we're going to go down to the ladder. So let me close up these portions since we're done with it. And in the ladder, there's different modules. I have my main module where I have my call functions to start up um, uh, the motors and drives. I have my gearing and camming uh, call functions. I have for my virtual, I have something called V that I have named the V1. So we have power and jogging and move relative and the stop and the set position and the reset function blocks here. But specifically, I wanted to get into gearing and show you. Let me just make this a little bit smaller. Let's see. Well, yeah. Let's do this. That should make it more viewable for everyone. There we go. So I have a uh, gear in for the virtual axes and physical axes one. So if I hover over the A in the function block, it is telling me that this is the master axes. And if I hover over the B, it's telling me it's the slave axes and there are other uh, elements uh, that are mandatory, and then these green empties are uh, optional that you can add in if need be. So uh, for this function block, I have virtual axes one as my master, physical axes one as my slave. In this second function block, this is where I'm making virtual axes one my master, and axes two as my slave. Then I have my gear out. Uh, for both axes one gear out and uh, axes two gear out. 
And I'm going to, uh, there we go. And then my gear in position function blocks, where I have uh, a similar situation, uh, axes one, axes two, um, whether they're virtual or master, uh, so on and so forth. And then gear in position. So there you are. Now, what does that look like when it's running? Well, let's go back to my VNC connector uh, viewer. Uh, so this is showing my HMI screens. Uh, this is the main screen. And then if I go to gearing, you will see um, uh, the, the speeds and positions and velocities of all three axes. And then the virtual gearing uh, for A1, uh, the actual axes one, I have a two to one ratio. And for axes two, I have a four to one ratio. They're all set at the same speeds, but this one should go uh, twice as fast as this one. At this point, I would gear in both axes, and then I would start the move. And then you can see the positions and the velocities changing. Let me see if I can show you that on my webcam. And I'm going to switch webcams one moment. And I'm going to go to my second webcam. And there you see the gearing using the virtual axes as the master, actual axes one and actual axes two is then geared off of that. Just to review what you're looking at, uh, in the center of your uh, webcam, you have uh, the USC controller. Uh, you see closest to the camera is the EtherCAT Motion Master module. All the way in the back here is a 24 volt power supply. Um, you have uh, then your EtherCAT connection going to drive number one or axis number one. And then this blue cable feeds the EtherCAT from one to two. So these are your servo drives here located on the left. And then behind this panel, you have two motors uh, spinning the orange wheels. I'm going to stop. So you see. Uh, both motors have stopped, actually all three motors. The virtual motor is at a zero velocity and axes one and two uh, are both at a zero velocity. If we wanted to change the gearing, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, just for giggles here, uh, let's see, let's crank this one up to six. I have to gear out because I then need to re-gear in. I'm going to re-home. Stop, home, stop, home. There we go. So I set the positions back to zero. Uh, I can gear in again. Uh, axis one is going to go two to one. And then axis two is going to go six to one. Let's see if this is going to take off. Yeah. So you can see that second axis on the webcam is just turning six times the virtual. Um, it, it's much quicker. Uh, again, in in a servo application, you might have uh, the need where one axis is spinning uh, faster than your others. Uh, it's nice to do that with gearing. Somewhat simple. So 
at stop, stop, stop. We need to gear out, reset and home, reset and home, reset and home. There we go. So that is a good example of gearing with the virtual axes. Next up, I'd like to uh, take a few minutes and uh, review camming with the virtual axes. Now with, with camming again, um, we can cam between physical axes, axes one and two, um, one and three, whatever, whatever you set up in your software. In this example, we're going to cam between the virtual axes and physical axes one, and then the virtual axes and physical axes two. So here we have virtual axes. One is my master in my function block, and then axes one being my slave. And then you have the same uh, cam in uh, function block for the second, uh, which would have virtual axes one and axes two. The function blocks that you need are all preset and uh, available to you in Unilogic. Uh, you have the camming function blocks, you need a cam table, you need cam in and cam out. So let's see what that looks like in Unilogic. There we go. And I'll go back to the screen. So, um, Module number nine or, or ladder number nine in my software is my camming. Um, in my camming, let me just quickly show you. In my camming screen, I have radio buttons where I can pick um, the cam table that I want to run. Um, so that is what's going on up here. The radio button select and store um is is here uh but now we get into the camming function blocks and you will see the cam table uh select so my master or a tag is my virtual axes one and my slave is axes number one uh index is taking that um from the uh, index uh, of the radio button. And then uh, for virtual axes one and virtual axes two. Um, there was a, a question just presented uh, the, regarding where are these function blocks in the Unilogic software? So on the right side, you have your Unilogic toolbox. And if you were to scroll down under motion control, you will see uh, all the function blocks for motion control. Uh, so your power, your home, your stop. And then here you have your gearing function blocks, gear in, gear out, gear in position. And your camming function block uh, cam table select, cam in, and cam out. And so if I was to um, uh, wanting to set a cam table, I could do motion control, cam table select, pick this function block, and drag it over, and then connect it um, right, right to this function block. Or, or if I wanted to add a rung in the ladder, I could right click on the rung, insert a rung, take this function block and connect it right into the ladder. So the value of Unilogic with this EtherCAT servo motion is, is very high. It's very easy to use and implement. The function blocks are all predefined for you. Uh, it's very intuitive to use. I'm going to delete this rung since we're not using it. Um, I just wanted to show you that as an example.
So what does this look like? Let's go back to the HMI screen. There we go. And again, I have um, uh, three different uh, screens that I'm showing today. The main screen, the uh, gearing screen, where you can set up your gear ratios, and then the camming screen, uh, where you again can uh, enable your drives, uh, start or stop the motion, uh, reset your home positions. But down at the bottom in camming is where you would select your cam table. So I have a cam table that I've called uh, pick and place, where it basically will take uh, axes one and go from zero position to 180 position and then back to zero. So I'm going to select that cam and I'm going to do a cam in. And then under axes two, I have others. I'll do a three position rotate. I'm going to select that cam and cam in. And then at this point, So I don't know if you are catching this on the webcam, uh, but axis one is doing uh, a rotate from zero to 180, um, and it's just sort of a pick and place. It's, it's uh, maybe picking up something at the zero position and placing at the 180 degree position. The three rotate on axis two was just a short um, turn, um, 720 degrees, I'm sorry, uh, 1080 degrees, turn three times and stop. Uh, that's all that was doing. I'm going to stop the movements now. I'm going to reset. Oh, I'm sorry, I need to cam out. Then I'm going to reset and home, reset and home, reset and home. There we go. So the positions are all back in the home position. I'm going to disable the drives here for a moment. I want to set up my pointer to be more or less at the zero position. looks good and that one looks good okay then I can enable my drives again and I'm going to reset and home reset and home reset and home because I was because I have absolute encoders on my motors uh, even if I manually turn the motor uh, it would record the position um, of that movement and then in this example, let's do the pick and place, the zero to 180. And then we'll do a lane diverter. This is where it goes from minus 45 degrees to positive 45 degrees. So in axis two, if you had boxes coming down a conveyor and you had a diverter, you could push them off to the left or push them off to the right. Uh, whereas axis one is just going to go from zero to 180 degrees and then back to zero. It's going to oscillate back and forth. So I'm going to select this cam and cam in. And then I'm going to select this cam and cam in. And if we keep our fingers crossed, if I hit move, there we go. So one's going 180 degrees and then back to zero. And the other um, axis, axis two, is going minus 45 and plus 45 degrees. And what's important to note here is that this is all being based on the virtual axes and the motion or position of the virtual axes as defined in the CAM table. Let me show you what that looks like in the Unilogic. So we went through the ladder uh, for camming that you see here. 
And then you have your HMI modules, you have your main screen uh, buttons and, and uh, windows, you have your gearing, you have your camming. Um, and then if you scroll down a little further, you're going to find data tables and your cam recipes would be shown here. If I was to go back up to data table recipes, I could either add a new recipe by clicking this plus sign, or I could add a new cam recipe by clicking here. And as you see, there are five cam recipes that are already defined. And in cam recipe zero that you see on the left motor here, we start out both uh, motors at zero. The master is my virtual motor. The slave is physical axis one. And you can see as the motor is rotating, it just goes up to uh, back and forth from zero to 180, zero to 180, so on and so forth. And I think this is the oscillation. No, let's see if this is the op this is the oscillating motor that you see on the right in the um, webcam. So here, the master motor, which is the virtual, is just rotating 360 degrees. But while it's doing that, uh, physical axis two, the slave motor, is rotating from positive 45 to minus 45 degrees, uh, sort of that lane diverter idea, uh, but sweeping uh, 45 degrees in either direction of zero. I'm going to uh, close up the Unilogic and I'm going to now stop the movement, stop the movement, I'm going to cam out. I'm back in my um, VNC viewer, which is my virtual HMI screen. Uh, return to the main menu. Let me close that out and back to the PowerPoint. So in conclusion, um, I wanted to make sure you knew the capabilities of the virtual axes how they can be included in gearing, and how the virtual axes can be included in camming. Also, the belt mode to eliminate any encoder uh, uh, overruns, uh, all available when using EtherCAT as your motion communications. Um, in general, just to give you uh, a quick summary of Unilogic, um, having one in all in one solution uh, where you can control your PLCs, your motion, uh, the industrial internet of things, the VFDs, having that all in one solution called Unilogic is, is phenomenal. Uh, it makes uh, the development and commissioning of software and automation machinery uh, very easy and uh, a lot quicker than the competition. We have innovative solutions at very affordable prices. Please keep that in mind when talking to customers. Very personalized, no charge support available 24 seven. And again, the integration, having just one programming environment, um, I can't say enough, using the Unilogic and EtherCAT to save time, uh, to have one programming environment, a single point of support, uh, very valuable uh, to you and your customers. So with that all said, um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. You have the contact information for Thomas and myself up on the screen. I'm going to turn off my webcam. And again, if there's any questions from anyone, um, this is a great time to ask. Of course, you can always send uh, myself or Thomas an email.
And I'm not seeing any questions uh, pop up on the screen. So uh, given that situation then, I'll thank you very much for attending today's webinar. I hope you found it valuable. If I could be of any assistance uh, to you, your customers, with any motion control applications, uh, please uh, let me know. And I wish you all a good day. It's snowing here in the Philadelphia area. So uh, please, if it's snowing where you are, be careful. And uh, I uh, look, uh, look forward to working with you all in the near future. Okay, thanks. Have a good one.